on destiny, horoscopes, quantum entanglement and the story of Sleeping Beauty. Ask anyone who claims to be scientific what they think of horoscopes and they may roll their eyes and simply say a load of woo or a load of tosh or rubbish all of which mean the same thing but they would be wrong and they would be wrong because they have had it explained by someone who doesn't really know themselves they just believe in it because they want to and although faith can be a wonderful thing in this case it isn't, because it has prevented a most interesting area being studied. So let us start the ball rolling and explore the idea of the Earth-centric model introduced in our video on the signs of the zodiac and our video of the cosmic egg. The Earth-centric model if we want to examine the systems that govern the Earth, our planet, it makes sense to study them from Earth itself. If we do this, we are using an Earth-centric model, not a geocentric one, because this term has come to describe a belief that all the planets rotate around the Earth in a plane, as though it was the Sun. And this is not what is meant. The Earth-centric model simply requires that when it is on Earth and examining events from a specific spot on the Earth. Since no one can occupy the same point in space at the same time, your view will be unique. What is happening to you is happening to no one else. As such, all observations on the effects of anything, whatever it is, will be entirely personal. And if a small meteor happened to fall from space on that spot, just as you were standing on it, it would give you the terrific headache and not the person standing next to you. The planets, the sun and the stars. Surrounding Earth and moving in all sorts of directions and orbits are the sun, the moon and the planets. The order of the heavenly bodies in the solar system, starting nearest the Sun and working outwards, is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. If you include Pluto, it would come after Neptune on the list, and of course we must not forget the Moon. There are also Ceres, which comes between Mars and Jupiter, which has always been there, but was not called a planet, and Charon, which comes between Pluto and the once provisionally named 2003 UB313, but now called Eris. Eris is the most massive and the second largest known dwarf planet in the solar system. It was named after the Greco-Roman goddess of strife, and discord. But Snow White, OR10, may not be a dwarf. Eris, Pluto, Ceres, Haumea and Mekimeki are dwarf planets. Haumea is beyond Neptune and Mekimeki lies in the Kuiper Belt. It is named after the creator god of the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island, whereas Haumea is named after the Hawaiian goddess of childbirth. Then if we go further afield, we have the Great Wheel of the Milky Way and all the constellations. So although some are near and some are far away, the sky is actually chock-a-block full of objects, absolutely brimming with them. Non-local or remote entanglement. In physics, it is now recognized 
that what we see with our five senses is not what exists. See our video on reality. And that there is a layer of reality we will never be able to perceive with our five senses. Maybe several. A part of this strange world, the so-called quantum world, includes a feature called quantum entanglement. Put very simply, things have an effect on each other which is entirely unrelated to what we call distance. It is as if things light years away are not, but are close enough to affect the thing perceiving it. But it has to be perceived to have any influence. So once the observer has observed it, they are entangled and each has an influence on the other. It is as if everything in the universe was really in one room, like the guests at a party. And once a guest had mingled and chatted to someone, they were bound by an invisible thread of influence. One indeed, which was either an attraction or a repulsion. In a sense, the force we blithely call gravity is just one instance of this and why we say something gravitates towards something else. Even more exciting or alarming, depending on your viewpoint, physicists are finding that these entangled objects then act in harmony with one another or in some senses do the same thing. So like the guests in this party, if one guest starts dancing away, the one connected with the thread also do, as if in synchrony. Wikipedia. However, this behaviour gives rise to seemingly paradoxical effects. Any measurement of a particle's properties results in an irreversible wave function, collapse of that particle and changes the original quantum state. With entangled particles, such measurements affect the entangled system as a whole. Clear as mud, eh? Better to think of it more like a Mexican wave in a crowd or maybe the action of a pinball machine. Such phenomena were the subject of a 1935 paper by Albert Einstein, Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen and several papers by Erwin Schrödinger shortly thereafter. Einstein even referred to it as spooky action at a distance. Which it is, as it must mean reality is indeed almost impossibly different from the apparent view we get with our five senses and perception system. And in some senses nothing is ever there. It is all here. Horoscopes and Entanglement Let us now hand over the stage to astrologers. They say that a person born on a specific time and on a specific date and a total exact location has a horoscope. A true horoscope shows the positions of as many heavenly bodies, not Earth, as they can get on the chart from an Earth-centric point of view. Equally important, they do their best to home in on the specific location, as although the exact location you occupied or occupy may not be known, it can be approximated. So now, imagine you are this little, unique soul, occupying a very specific position in space, not occupied by anyone else. And surrounding you is not only Mother Earth and all its creatures, but all those heavenly bodies, some of which may be closely entangled with you. What can they give you when you incarnate as a physical being? Your personality and your destiny. As such, it is indeed total nonsense to say someone 
is a typical Lear or typical Taurian because they will be typical of nothing but the combination of traits gifted to you by each of the entangled heavenly bodies present when you are given a name. And only you will have them because you are the only one in that space at that time and on that date. Given a name means being given a unique identifier, a bit like an internet address, thus ensuring the entanglement remains, providing permanent communication. The story of Sleeping Beauty, taken from the Perro, Pesophore and Giam Battista Basile versions. Sleeping Beauty, La Belle au Bois Dumont, or Little Briar Rose, is a classic fairy tale. The story starts when a long wished for child is born to a king and queen. At the christening, seven good fairies are invited to be godmothers to the infant princess. At the time of the story, only seven planets were known. But an extra old fairy enters the palace, unnoticed and unrecognised. As she had not appeared for so many years, they had forgotten she even existed. Six of the other seven fairies then offer their gifts of personality to the infant princess, all of which are positive. But the unnoticed fairy becomes angry about having been forgotten, and as her gift, she curses the infant princess. One day, she says, princess will prick her finger on a spindle of a spinning wheel and die. Aghast, the seventh fairy, who had not yet given her gifts, attempts to reverse the old fairy's curse. However, she finds she can only do so partially. Instead of dying, the princess will fall into a deep sleep for a hundred years and be awakened by a kiss from a king's son. This is her gift of protection. But despite the king's attempts to thwart the curse, the princess, on her 16th birthday, wanders through the palace rooms and comes upon an old woman spinning with her spindle. The princess, who has never seen anyone spin before, asks the old woman if she can try the spinning wheel, and the curse is fulfilled as she pricks her finger and instantly falls asleep. The sleeping princess is laid upon a bed. The king and queen kiss their daughter goodbye and depart, proclaiming the entrance to be forbidden. But the good fairy, seeing that the princess will awaken to distress when she finds herself alone, puts everyone in the castle to sleep and summons a forest of trees brambles and thorns around the castle to protect her. Here lies the hoarded love, the key to all the treasure that shall be. Come fated hand, the gift to take, and smite this sleeping world awake. This story has a very happy ending, because of course her prince did come eventually, riding his horse, and fought his way through the thorns and briars, braving all the obstacles put in his way, like a true hero, and wandering through all the rooms of the castle with their sleeping occupants, he finds her. And he awakens her with a kiss. And she never looked back. Some say she even had lots of children with that beloved prince. <laughs> 